Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my crying come unto thee. I call thy face from thee in the time of my trouble. Incline thine ear to me when I call. O hear me in that right soon. For my days are consumed away like smoke, and my bones are burnt up as it were a firebrand. My heart is smitten down and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. For the voice of my groaning, my bones will scarce cleave to my flesh. I am become like a pelican in the wilderness, and like an owl that is in the desert. I have watched and am even as it were a sparrow that sitteth alone upon the housetop. My enemies revile me all the day long, and they that are mad upon me are sworn together against me. For I have eaten ashes as it were bread, and mingled my drink with weeping. And that because of thine indignation and wrath, for thou hast taken me up and cast me down. My days are gone like a shadow, and I am withered like grass. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance throughout all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for it is time that thou have mercy upon her, yea, the time is come. And why, O servants, think upon her sons, and in pity of them see her in the dust? The nations shall fear thy name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth, thy majesty. When the Lord shall build up Zion, and when his glory shall appear. When he turneth him unto the prayer of the poor destitute, and despiseth not their desire. This shall be written for those that come after, and the people which shall be born shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from his sanctuary. Out of the heaven did the Lord behold the earth. That we might hear the mornings of sons that are in captivity, and deliver them that are appointed unto death. That they may declare the name of the Lord in Zion, and his worship at Jerusalem. When the peoples are gathered together, and the kingdoms also to serve the Lord. He brought down my strength in my journey, and shortened my days. But I said, O Lord God, take me not away in the midst of my age. As for thy ears, they pure throughout all generations. Thou, Lord, beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and in the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. They all shall wax old as the garment. And as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. The children of my servants shall continue, and their seed shall stand fast in thy sight. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. us mercifully with thy help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the meditation of those mighty acts whereby thou hast given unto us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, 
who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end.
The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ according to St. Luke. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes saw how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, named Iscariot, being of the twelve of the number. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and consented to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, <coughs> bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and gave thanks, and brake it, and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. <coughs> and they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto them, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, Nothing. <coughs> 
Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his script. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. And he came out and wept as he was wont, went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of fall blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to the disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow, and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, behold a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, bestrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, Be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves. When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that smote thee? And many other blasphemously spake, and many other things blasphemously spake they against him. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together, and they led him into their council, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, If I told you, ye will not believe. And if I also asked you, Ye will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then said they all, Art thou then the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. 
and they said, What need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. Tonight we turn to the King who heals. In the return of the King, which is the third part of the Lord of the Rings, there's an old saying that an old woman repeats and then it gets spread around, that the hands of a king are the hands of a healer. The understanding that healing belongs to kings is not limited to the fiction of J.R.R. Tolkien. It's old, widespread, perhaps older than Christianity, but nowhere more true than in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus is the real king and the one who uh, shows us this in Holy Week by healing. This is uh, the evangelist Luke's particular interest. He was known as a physician and he noted, he recorded, many and various ways that Jesus healed people of sicknesses, physical and also spiritual. There are at least three in the passion we just heard. At the Last Supper, Luke tells us the extraordinary words that Jesus spoke that night, this is my body and of the wine, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you, Thus, Jesus identifies the bread and the wine with himself, particularly in his dying on the cross. Luke also records that Jesus said that one of them would betray him. And then re Luke records something the other gospels do not say. Right after the disciples start asking which of them it was who was going to betray Jesus, they start to argue about which of them is the greatest. Luke thus reveals that all the disciples at the Last Supper are sinners. Their dear teacher is about to die. He has spoken words that pertain to his death. He has said, I will not eat or drink this again until and they get into a game of one-upmanship. Jesus tells them in answer, greatness in the kingdom is shown in humble service. He points to himself as the exemplar. He is the king appointed as such by his father, yet he is serving them. And by being the king who serves, Jesus heals their division one with another. By shedding his blood, the king takes away their sin. Here's another moment when they go out to the Mount of Olives, the soldiers come. They are led by Judas. St. Luke writes, Judas drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Now note how St. Luke puts this. Judas comes near with the purpose of kissing Jesus, but Jesus said unto him. Jesus wants to arrest the kiss before it happens. That would mean, but Jesus said unto him, that Judas, although betraying Jesus, did not in the event consummate the kiss. Jesus spared Judas that further degradation. And then there's the most obvious one, which comes right after. One of the disciples pulls a sword and cuts off the right ear of the servant of the high priest. 
Jesus puts a halt to any such violence and reaching forth his hand to that servant's ear, he heals him. Even at the end, presiding over the final meal with his disputatious disciples, then halting Judas, and then healing the ear of one of those who came out to arrest him, Jesus shows he is the king, and he is king because he accomplishes healing. Sin is basically division, setting one thing against another. It starts in the Garden of Eden, when our first parents are tempted with the idea of setting themselves over against God. Instead of living in harmony with God's purposes for all of creation, they decide to take matters into their own hands as they take into their hands the fruit that God had told them not to eat. But sin is not only a ripping asunder of our relationship with God. Our first parents, after their disobedience, had two sons. And one fine day, one son killed the other. The primal sin was division with God. In the next generation, sin is division of one man against another. And it just keeps getting worse. St. Paul puts it memorably when he says that in his own person, he finds that he does the thing he does not want to do, and he does not the thing that he wants to do. Miserable man that I am, who will save me from this body of death? The sinful human situation is not only that we are divided from God, not only that we are divided one from another, but also that we are divided inside our very selves. Indeed, division permeates the universe. We could talk about, if we had wanted to take the time, and it could take a long time, our division from the world that God created. For this division that is sin is cosmic. St. Paul asked, who will save me from this body of death? Who will save me from this mess, this whole division thing that is not only everywhere around me, but also within myself? St. Augustine, three, four hundred years later, asked the same question. He was in his early thirties. He had become convinced by that time in his life that Christianity was true, but he had a divided will. He was torn inside between wanting to give himself to God and wanting to continue to enjoy the pleasures such as they were of his unholy life. And the problem is, if your will is divided, where can you find an undivided will that would be able to put your divided will back together? That situation was, for St. Augustine, not only logically impossible, it was existential anguish. Which of us has not known it at some time in our life? Who will save us from this mess? Who will bring healing to all that is wrong in the world? St. Paul goes on to give the answer. Thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is Christ Jesus, him alone, who saves us from all that afflicts us. He is the healer of sin and of all sin's consequences. He puts back together all that sin has taken apart. And he does this even while he is having his last meal and is then arrested and taken away to a mock trial 
on the way to the cross. To the end, Jesus is the king who heals. them that rise up against me, for lo, they lie waiting for my soul, and the mighty men are gathered against me. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thy own have we given thee. Amen. We bring our prayers to the foot of the cross of Jesus, who in the humble service of his love takes upon himself all our ills, of body and of soul, that he may impart to us wholeness and health in body and soul, that he may reconcile and restore to unity our divided wills and bring to wholeness once again all that sin has torn apart. Of your charity, I bid your prayers for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, and especially for the repose of the soul of Susie Art of this parish, who died today. Upon whose soul and the souls of all the faithful, may Almighty God have mercy. Amen. Rest the eternal branch unto them, O Lord, and let light and perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and to receive these our prayers 
which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present. That with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen.
Christ.